Thank you for joining me. This is Tim DeLeo with using Windows Home Server.com. In this video, we're going to look at the Core Temp Utility. This is a free and portable application that shows you your CPU temperature and core loads. We're going to look at Windows Live Movie Maker Beta, see how it affects CPU temperature when we do some video encoding, and then we're going to look at a few of my other systems around the house and see how those CPU temperatures compare. Let's get started, shall we? First thing I'm going to do is open up Windows Live Movie Maker Beta. Now I've already thrown a couple of minutes of video in here and what I'm going to do is save this movie as a high definition video. I'm going to bring in my core temp utility and you can see that my low has been 23 degrees C and my high has been 48. Low being under idle with 0 to 5 percent low and high being right after startup as the processor was going through its startup routine. What we will do now is go to File, Save Movie for High Definition Display, and we'll just save this to the desktop for now. Now you can see each of the loads for my CPU cores is going anywhere between 50 and 80 percent. Now my CPU cooler is at 27 degrees right now and holding. The Corsair H50 does an excellent job with a push-pull and 120 millimeter fans on both sides at keeping my CPU temperature right around 30 degrees C. As we continue video encoding with Windows Live Movie Maker Beta, you can see that my CPU still may have the occasional spike, but still holds around 30 degrees C. Again, with a Corsair H50 and an AMD Phenom triple core processor, these CPU temps are very, very good. So far, the Core Temp Utility has done very well. I would definitely recommend it. I have my Core Temp Utility next to my EVGA Elite Tuning Utility as a comparison, and you can see that the core CPUs are pretty much showing the same. There's a slight variation depending on the refresh rate of each utility, but they do get their information from the same place. Now I'm going to run the same video and do the same video encoding. So I'm going to go to Save Movie for High Definition Display. We'll save to the desktop and we'll start our encoding. Now you can see that my cores do jump up at this point. I'm running the stock Core Intel i5-750 cooler. I'll come back in a little bit after I've gone to my Arctic cooler and show you the temperature variances. One of the things that you'll notice about the Core i5 is that it processes and handles data much quicker. You can see with Windows Live Movie Maker Beta that the encoding it's doing is much, much faster than the AMD triple core processor that I had in the prior segment. I moved a copy of CoreTemp over to my Windows Server codename Vale. I've now logged in over Remote Desktop Connection. I will double click on Computer, double click on the folder share which I put it in videos, and then drag CoreTemp to the desktop. Once I've done that, I'll double click on the folder and double click on CoreTemp. This will open up CoreTemp and it will always use these CoreTemp and plugin configuration setting files. So just create a folder and put it inside the folder. If you put it on your desktop, you'll have to deal with these ugly icons and extra folder files. So just put it in a folder and leave it at that. You can see now that I'm running 32 degrees C on my first core and 33 degrees C on my second core. You can see on my Dell PowerEdge 440, which is a couple years old, it was my original Windows Home Server, uh, it's a Conroe chip and it's a dual core 775 Intel. Uh, it's pretty cool, um, literally running at 32 to 30 degrees C. Uh, it does have a high of 41. Now it's been running all day in a hot garage. In fact, even now at uh, 10 o'clock at night in my garage, it's 89 degrees. Uh, now this isn't the ambient temperature of the case, but it is the ambient temperature of the room. 
So 32 to 33 degrees C is not bad. I'd have no idea how hot this was if I wasn't using core temp, so it's nice to be able to see that. Uh, in addition, you can see I'm running 0% load. So if I were to try and do some additional types of calculations, uh, my load would increase. But right now, it's basically sitting in idle. On my main garage system, I'll run the CPU utility. And you can see that my temperatures are in the uh, mid-50s, a little bit higher depending. Again, I'm running about uh, 90 degrees in the garage right now, even though it's 10 o'clock at night. It's really hot out in L.A. Of course, it's hot all over. Um, but this is just a regular Dell case with a regular active cooling solution. Now, this is a uh, E7500 Wolfdale uh, Core 2 Duo Intel chip. It came with a stock active uh, cooling system, which is basically a fan and the heat fins. And I'm going to need to eventually change over to a better solution, probably heat pipes at this point. Uh, you can see that I'm running anywhere between the mid 50s to the low 60s, depending on where I'm at. So I do want to look at an alternative cooling solution. I use remote desktop to get into my HP EX485. And what I did was, is I just put the 32-bit version in my software folder. So I'm just going to drag the folder over to my desktop on, again, my EX485. Double-click, double-click on the exec file, and there we go. You can see it's an Intel Celeron 440, the Conroe chip. Um, currently, right now, it's at 68 degrees C, which is pretty warm. Uh, it's inside my uh, ventilated cabinet, but my house is about 90 degrees because I just got home. Uh, so it's running pretty warm. Uh, I may want to keep an eye on that uh, over the next couple of days. But again, it's great to have the tool to give me an idea exactly what's going on with my chip. Again, what I've been doing on most of my machines is just double click, go to the software folder where I've stored the core temp and just drag the folder over. You can place it in your program files later on. But double click. Open up the utility. And you can see here that this is an Intel Core 2 Duo, an E7200. Uh, I don't think I have a single same CPU on any of my PCs. Uh, this one's running around 58, 59 degrees C. So this one is running a little warmer, but I tend to find that these uh, Core 2s and uh, related chips all run warmer than normal. Uh, again, this is a quick and easy tool, and I would suggest it uh, for anyone looking to get some temperature information from any of their PCs.